Meu nome é Cairo Santos e eu sou o kicker e único brasileiro jogando na NFL. Cada chute, cada jada conquistada, cada passo me levou para mais perto dos meus sonhos. Agora, a cada 200 reais em compras com seu Visa cadastrado, você tem a chance de ficar mais perto do sonho de assistir ao Super Bowl 59. E usando o seu cartão de débito, você ainda concorre a prêmios diários de até mil reais. Não importa o tamanho do seu sonho, dê o primeiro passo. Visa, apoiando seus passos aonde você quiser chegar. Are you ready for some high adventure coming up next? On the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. In the last episode of The Hawk Chronicles. I'm not quite ready to leave yet. I'm still a little upset at our suspect discovering my tracking device. I'm sure he suspects that I was the one who planted the tracker. Will we be docking at the Titan IV port? We will enter into a geosynchronous orbit and look for the Ulysses. If we do not intercept it, we will continue to the southern continent and rendezvous with our exiled brothers. Any news? I'm just leaving the North Charles Street step. And it looks like Mac and Hernandez got the right van. Well, since you're leaving the scene, I can only assume you're comfortable with whatever they might find. I think our suspects are pretty cautious. I don't think we're going to find much. Do you have news for us? Our stealth fighters on the other side of the Titan portal are reporting that Wi-Fi has just crossed over. His current trajectory will take him to Titan IV. Nate, a bat detachment is en route to the BSS as we speak. Your mission is to get them to Titan IV. Well, sir, I believe we have arrived at that scenario. What are you talking about, Agent Simon? The relay, it's gone. And now, episode 121, The Pirates of Titan. police removed it for further investigation. I just left their headquarters. They are under the impression that it is still on the tower. Well, this changes things. Are you saying that there is something in the hardware that might be valuable? Uh-huh. Forgive me, Director, but are you withholding important information from me? I told you, Agent Simon, your only mission is to capture the bombers and determine any future targets Rage might have. So you do know more? I don't know anything for certain, but I will be paying a visit to our friends in the communications centre, and I assure you we will know the full story by tomorrow. I have a very strong suspicion that the maintenance worker, Detective Lowe, interviewed here, may not be who he said he was. Why do you say that? My guts tell me that he might be one of the bombers. Once the biker discovered my tracking device, they knew we were on to them. So they planted the tracker on a utility truck and waited for us to show up. You're taking quite a leap to reach that assumption. Perhaps. But the man I saw with Detective Lowe was not the biker I met. I'll need to investigate this worker. Your previous report stated that the utility worker was a long-time employee of the communications company. Yes, but it wouldn't be the first time Rage was able to turn someone. Very well. I think it's a lead worth pursuing. Perhaps you can find evidence of something that Rage may have used to turn him, like being passed over for a promotion or a grievance issue of some kind. I'll get on to this first thing tomorrow morning. Very well, Tony. Keep me posted. I hope to have more information for you by then. Do you think they'll actually tell you anything? If it is just the relay, why would the bombers want to take it? Why not just destroy it in place? That's my point. It must be able to retain the information it relays. And if it is sensitive information, I can assure you that Her Majesty's communication centre will cooperate with us. We'll need to put all our efforts into retrieving it. It would be nice if I had some sort of GPS system. That would be too easy. You'll just have to do it the hard way. Well, it seems everything I've done lately was the hard way. Contact me as soon as you have anything. You do the same, Director. Director, Agent O'Neill here to see you. Send her in. Go right on in, Ms. O'Neill. Oh, 
Barb. Please, have a seat. Thank you, Director. I wanted to bring you up to speed on Kate and Kelly. Okay. The latest information I have is that Kate came through surgery just fine. She's already started her therapy. Are they planning to do all of the therapy at the alternate Mayo? That I'm not sure of. I think there's a good chance that at some point she'll be moved back over to this side. Fortunately, most of her contacts here aren't aware of the extent of the damage she received. Otherwise, it would be impossible to explain her rapid recovery. That's an understatement. If she were over here, she'd still be in critical condition. Or worse. How about Barnes, Horace, and Kelly? They were just transferred to Annapolis. I believe the plan is for them to return to the Eastern Shore and await instructions. When do I start training Kelly? We're still working out the issues with our current employer. We have to get Barnes established right away in his PI business. Once he's up and running, we can have Barnes officially make the job offer to her. It looks like a hard sell to me. She makes good money at the law firm. That's why we will be setting up a contract with Jim to vet all government applicants requiring a high security clearance. We'll be able to better her current salary, plus she'll get flex hours, which will be a good selling point to her current employer. What if they make a counter offer? I believe she's highly regarded there. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Our pockets are a little deeper than theirs. In the meantime, we can get her here to start the administrative side. How is Tracy Richards working out? She fit right in at the SIS. She really handled herself well in St. Louis investigating that rage bombing threat. Richards came with high recommendations from Agent Soren. Speaking of Soren, have you heard anything new from Johannesburg? I'm really curious to hear how it's working out with an MI6 agent, a Hongan mercenary, Soren, and the Johannesburg police. That just sounds like a three-ring circus to me. Strangely enough, they all seem to be playing together nicely. As far as we can tell, there doesn't seem to be a connection between the Johannesburg case and the Baltimore case. Other than the fact that Rage is probably behind both cases. I'd say that's a pretty safe assumption. Hmm. Got a text here from Nelson. Suspect van found abandoned near Charles Street Stip. Being towed to the lab for processing. We'll closely monitor findings. If one of those suspects turns out to be alien to this world, we'll have to move more quickly. Do we have a team in place to move in if they make an apprehension? Yes, sir. Nelson will notify us if they get close. If they do, we can move in just like we did with Von Longer. At least this time, the captain is an IDF member. Captain McCall was straight Baltimore police, and she raised quite a ruckus when we apprehended Von Longer right from under her nose. But we still have Hernandez and Mac to deal with. I believe Mac was part of the original Von Longer investigation. I wouldn't worry too much about them. Homeland Security will assume the case, since it involves a plot to bomb a protected park service area. That's one of the reasons why we're using the Essex Park area for the sting. But the Baltimore PD wouldn't know that Essex is the target. Only the IDF knows that. Unless... Unless you don't plan to apprehend them until they move on the dummy headquarters. Exactly. We really can't make a case for the feds to get involved unless they attempt an attack. Essex is perfect for that. It's isolated enough, and it's controlled by park rangers. Let's hope they try something before the SIS makes an arrest. Chief, that's the last of it. Button her up and get me a crew head count. Forget something? Hi, Captain Tam. I'm so glad we caught you. Yes, we did. My associate here left his galactic passport in the cabin. Would it be possible if we went and got it? I'll go with him if it makes you more comfortable. How can you forget a passport? Isn't it embedded in a subcutaneous chip along with everything else? I wish. It would make things so much easier. He comes from a rural part of our planet. They're still using handheld devices to communicate, access digital information, and even take photos. Sounds like he lives in the Stone Age. Well, listen. We are about to depart, so you'll have to be quick about it. I'll go with you two, and hopefully you can find what you need. I really want to thank you, Captain. I hope we aren't sending you back too much. If it doesn't take too long, we should be fine. We're just warming up the thruster chamber right now. You don't want a cold thruster when you go from traditional flight to space flight.
Let's see. You were in Section C, Stateroom 3, right? Yes, it's right up here on the left, I believe. They were very nice rooms, by the way. We thank you. We do try our best. Have you ever considered running a shuttle service on the side? You could haul cargo to a destination and anyone needing a ride there. That sounds like a good thing, but coordinating cargo and passengers to the same area is a lot of work. You're headed for Boldabar? It seems like there would be a lot of people headed that way. I can't just let anyone walk on board. I need to check them out first, and even then, I can't be sure that they are not a threat. <laughs> Now, do you know where the passport is? He's getting it. I was wondering, could you take us to the Western Continent? It's not far out of your way. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no way I could do that. Let me ask you again. Can you take us to the Western Continent? What is the meaning of this? You said if I ever needed transport again to contact you. Now put your hands behind your back. Cuffer. Her crew chief should be with the crew. Go and secure them, then secure the flight deck. You'll never get away with this. My crew outnumbers you. Not quite. While you were busy loading your ship, I had a few friends join us. Friends? As long as I pay them enough, they're my friends. If you're wondering about who's going to fly this ship, it will be my guard who just left. He's one of the best pilots in the galaxy. I still don't understand. Why are you doing this? Because she is following my orders. What? Wait, just wait just a minute. I, I recognize you now. You're that former rage leader on trial on Titan III. No wonder you hid his identity. I am not the former leader of Rage. I am the leader. And as for my trial well, I'm afraid I wasn't able to make it. I had more pressing business. To hijack my ship? Merely commandeering it for my important mission. If you cooperate, you'll get your ship back. Cooperate? I don't think I have much of a say in things since I'm handcuffed to a chair. Just how do I cooperate? It's simple. You take us to the Western Continent, where we'll reorganize the remaining factions of Rage. You'll remain there until we've accomplished this. I don't like the sound of this so far. Why do I have to remain while you do this reorganizing? Because once we have gathered my troops, you will take us to intercept Zokar. Who or what is Zokar? He was my number two until he turned traitor. Sounds like there was a coup and you lost. Well, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. If he is your enemy, then this intercept, as you call it, won't be a friendly one. We're hoping to persuade the soldiers with Zokar to return to the true leader of Rage. And if they don't come to the darker side, what do you plan to do? We will use any means necessary to return Rage to its rightful leader. Are you too crazy? This ship has no offensive capabilities. We barely have enough defense mechanisms in place to ward off an attack. This is where your cooperation comes in. And just what do you expect me to do? When we encounter Zokar's ship, you will continue towards Baldabar as if nothing has happened. And you better not try anything funny. Funny? Seriously? You think I'm going to try and warn one monster that there's another monster on my ship? Whatever instructions he gives you, you will comply. Most importantly, do not attempt to send a distress signal on your transponder. Zokar is known throughout the galaxy as Wi-Fi. He has the ability to send and receive any wireless signal. He would quickly detect any distress signals. Very well. Call for clearance. Inform the pilot that if she tries anything, we'll terminate her captain. Copy that. You'll never get away with this. If your crew values your life at all, I'm sure we will, Captain Tam.
Oh, man, it's great to be back at Hawkhaven. You can say that again. I remember back in the day after a tough mission, how good it was to come back here, kick off the shoes, sit on the dock, dip for crabs, throw out a line or two, throw a couple steaks on the grill, crack open a nice cold beverage or two. Well, what are we waiting for? Don't worry, there'll be plenty of time for that, but I do have some burger patties in the freezer. Sounds good. Say, uh, I have to ask. How do you think Kelly's going to do as an IDF agent? I mean, Kate was already in law enforcement, so the transition wasn't much of a stretch. Kelly is very goal-oriented. Uh, like a bulldog on a bone. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess you can say that. Seriously, Jim, I think she'll do okay. Got to tell you, I'm looking forward to having her work with me. So, what's the latest on the PI business? I think everything's about ready. Pierman's crew is putting the final touches on my office, and all of my permits have gone through. I'm expecting to set up shop maybe this week. Hey, do you know if uh, Kelly has approached her current employer yet? Now, that I don't know. I don't think it's going to be an issue with her. When things are looking like you're ready to go into full operation, she'll give them her two-week notice. Well, I uh, hope she doesn't expect to jump right in on a big IDF case. I know the agency is looking to her to do some research on the current bombing suspect. Yeah, but I don't think that would even whet her appetite. She'll be chomping at the bit. I think she's really looking forward to it. <laughs> Yeah, not like her sister. When I approached Kate about it, she said she had no desire to look for lost cats or cheating spouses. With Kate, it's a lot different. She has a career in law enforcement and is now a respected IDF agent. No offense, Jim, but working with you as a gumshoe is a step backwards for her. I tried to tell her that, that we'd actually be doing work and legwork for the IDF and possibly the SIS too. But, you know, I see your point. Speaking of a good detective, here comes Kelly with those burgers I was telling you about. How about that? Hey, Kelly, how did you know we were thinking about grilling some burgers? Because I'm too tired to cook, and you're out here by the grill just talking, and the kids are back and hungry, so don't just stand there. Light the grill. Do you need help? Uh, maybe, you know, maybe I can make a salad or something. I think I'd prefer something over a salad. No salad? Are you sure you're Kate's sister? There's potato salad in the fridge and some baked beans in the pantry, along with the uh, picnic plates. I'll get right on it, Chief. We were just talking about you. That's what I figured. I suppose you're both wondering how I'm going to do in this new job. I guess you could say that. We're hoping you'll fit in gradually rather than wanting to hit the ground running. I know they're trying to ease me into this job, but I'm not going to sit around reading manuals and filing reports I want to get my hands dirty. I think they're aware of that, and it's probably a point of concern. I think when you have your meeting with Holiday and O'Neill, you should let them know what your expectations are. I'm sure they'll tell you what they expect of you. Oh, don't you worry. I plan to. I understand there's quite a learning curve, but I can adapt quickly. <laughs> You're not the one I'm worrying about having to adapt. Good morning, Tony. Detective Lowe. We're tracking down information on that maintenance driver. Wonderful. And by the way, thank you for letting me keep the car overnight. Certainly. Are Soren and Sam using it to check out the motorcycle dealer we talked about? Yes, in fact, they dropped me off here. I hope they find something useful there. Well, it looks like Peter found something useful. Apparently, the maintenance man I talked to at the tower has resigned from the company. He took an early retirement. I think that's too much of a coincidence. He just earned himself a top spot on our suspect list. Do you have any address for him? According to his text, Peter is headed to his last known address. Have your people been able to provide any additional information on the relay? My director is working on it. I'll text him this information. Perhaps it will move things along a little faster. What can we do in the meantime? We have both suspects covered right now. What I don't understand is, if this relay is some sort of spying device by your government, who is behind it? Johannesburg does not have a British embassy. That's in Pretoria. And there's no British consulate here either. About the only government agency I can think of is the Department of International Trade. What exactly do they do? They assist companies in establishing businesses in South Africa. 
and also help South African companies set up in Great Britain. Hmm, international trade and companies have been on the rise lately. South Africa has a wealth of natural resources, especially in mineral deposits. You think this relay device could have been gathering intelligence on commercial opportunities rather than political? I certainly think it's possible. It would be a great source for insider trading. A company could be negotiating a big deal involving the diamond trade or oil deposits or even opening up a branch in South Africa. Someone with this type of information could very well make stock transactions that would benefit them in the long run. But how could the small relay intercept telecommunications like that? It didn't appear to have a very long range. Perhaps our thinking on this is all wrong. It didn't really need a long-range reception capability. It was mounted on one of the most important communication towers. Yes, I see what you're saying. All it had to do was intercept signals from the tower, then retransmit them. In that case, it wouldn't need to transmit far. Someone could pull right up to the base of the tower and download the information. Or better yet, if there were tower maintenance, they could just climb up there and download it. The relay would provide valuable inside trading information. So why try to blow it up? It seems the more we learn, the more questions we have. This brings up an intriguing question. Why would the British government spy on itself? Exactly. This may be the very reason we have no intel on the relay. It doesn't belong to us. We're making a lot of assumptions here. You really need to press your government for answers. According to my initial briefing, Her Majesty's Communication Centre requested that we investigate and recover the relay. That doesn't necessarily mean it belongs to your government. They may know about it and want it recovered. It could be embarrassing if the world found out that information like that was being leaked. Whatever the case, we need to find it plus the persons responsible for taking it. Good morning, Kate. Ready for your PT? Wow, I just had a flashback to you and Jim. I was standing right over there when you came in to start his vision test with his bionic eye. Well, it wasn't that long ago, really. Look at him now. He's doing great, back to work and eating like he used to. It's a wonder he's still alive. Yes, it is. He certainly had a rough time of it. No, I, I mean, it's a wonder he's still alive considering the way he eats. Well, there's that, too. I gave up on trying to modify his diet. So... What are we going to do today? Facial stretching exercises. I'm going to remove your bandages. After that, we'll work on your upper body. You mean you want me to make funny faces? I think I can do that. That's one way of looking at it. Okay, here we go. It's important to exercise full range while you are healing. Why do I feel like we're doing a scene from Return of the Mummy? I can imagine how it feels that way. Honestly, the wrappings aren't near to what a mummy would have. In fact, that's it. Ruth, tell me the truth. How bad is it? How bad is what? My face. How bad is it really? On a scale from 1 to 10. On a scale from 1 to 10? Give it to me straight. Mm, I'd say it's an 8.167. What? I'm just joking with you. I don't know. Looks are subjective. Trust me, it's much better than you are imagining. You're definitely not going to scare little kids. You look fine. There will be some follow-up work after we get through the physical therapy. I'm sure you'll be happy with the results. I can't imagine how. That blast removed most of my face. And you were extremely lucky to have Dr. Ko on the ship. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this discussion. I know. I, I know I'm lucky to be here. I'm just wondering how others will deal with my new look. Let's work on how you will deal with your new look. The rest will fall in place. I can say, however, that you'll have a big problem with your looks when you get back. What's that? You'll definitely need a new driver's license and passport photo. Dr. Davis, telephone, please. Dr. Davis, telephone, please.
Hey, what did you two find out? That Hernandez here knows every bakery between headquarters and Penn Station. Hey, you have to prioritize your priorities. Aside from where the best cream puffs in Baltimore are, did you get anything from the van or the site? The lab's running the prints now. You actually got prints? I thought these guys were pros. The inside was clean. No prints, hair samples, anything. But there was a clear pair of prints on the gas cap flap. I don't suppose there was a receipt for gas anywhere. They most likely paid cash. I doubt we'll ever find any uh, surveillance footage anywhere. But we've got Nelson going over traffic cams at the intersection. Maybe we'll get lucky. Did the Westminster police ever come up with anything on the stolen plates? No. The van that had the plates was in the area that wasn't covered by security cameras. Figures. That's why I was surprised the lab found those prints. They must have been in a hurry or were distracted when they got gas, maybe. What's bothering me is why have they gone through so much trouble just to pull off a small job? That's because they haven't pulled off a main job. What makes you say that? Number one, like Hernandez said, they went through an awful lot of trouble to pull off a small heist. Number two, they're still here. If that was their only job, why would they drive around town for all this time and then suddenly decide to ditch their ride? And three, I saw Homeland Security at the site. Wait, what? How can you be sure? Because I saw an agent there I recognized from Kate's case, the Von Longer case. Hey, I got some lab results. This is weird. What's weird? The lab report says that the prints were unidentifiable, like they weren't human. How will the IDF explain alien prints? Will the real reason for the Johannesburg relay be learned? And will the Ulysses fall into the hands of rage permanently? Find out the answers to these questions and more in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles, The E.T. Touch. You can listen to classical and brand new audio dramas through the Mutual Audio Network. Subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or iHeartRadio today. There's eight different podcasts, one for each day of the week and genre. And the Mutual Audio Network broadcast feed so you don't miss a day of your favorite shows. Subscribe to Mutual Audio tonight. Good night!